بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دس از ڈاکٹر محمد شفیق اگین آئی ایم یور لیکچر آف فلاسفی ایٹ ڈپارٹمنٹ آف اسلامک اینڈ پاکستان اسٹڈیز کسٹ اینڈ دا کورس آئی ایم ٹیچنگ یو ڈیورنگ دس سیمسٹر از کالڈ انٹروڈکشن ٹو لاجک دا کورس کوڈ فار دس کورس از پی ایچ آئی ون زیرو ون اینڈ دس از لیکچر نمبر فور Today we are going to look into what are the different kinds of philosophy just to give you an idea that what is philosophy about and what does it deal with. How different kinds of philosophy can help us reflect on this universe and the real life of human beings. on this earth. So let's move on and start looking what does these kinds of philosophy mean. The outline of today's lecture consists upon an overview of different kinds of philosophy such as philosophy of science, political philosophy, philosophy of language, philosophy of religion and philosophy of education to name a few although there are other branches or kinds of philosophy as well but these are the more important ones which we are going to discuss today so let's start with the philosophy of science that what does it mean As we have discussed in previous lectures that philosophy is basically search for the truth, love for wisdom or knowledge. So it would entail that philosophy of science would obviously mean the truth of science find out the truth about science or the knowledge about science basically philosophy of science is a sub branch of epistemology and epistemology being study of knowledge it concentrates upon epistemology of science that how do we get knowledge of science what are the sources we use while gaining knowledge in science the questions philosophy of science tries to deal with are such as what is science what basically constitutes science So there are two kinds of science one is called natural science which is further divided into biological chemical physical and formal sciences while the other kind of science is social science social sciences are just like to name a few sociology economics psychology and so on all those sciences which are related to human being as a part of society that is why they are called social sciences now what is science that's quite complex question to ask what constitutes science so there are different kinds of sciences which concentrate different aspects of knowledge man gets about the realities 
in this universe. Suppose we try to dig out the reality about chemicals. All those paths or ways which lead towards gaining knowledge about chemicals and the relationship between chemicals. They constitute chemistry and chemistry is a science. It is called natural science because chemicals are something which are natural. So such kind of questions are asked in philosophy of science that what is science? What makes science science? It is a systematic study about an aspect of reality in this universe It also includes the methodology. What is the methods of science? What is the purpose of science? What are the goals of science? So generally speaking, the methodology science uses is observational in nature. The method of science is observation. In other words, is just called seeing is believing. It bases its foundations upon observational and experimental knowledge, such as when man experimented with hydrogen and oxygen, the mixture of two in a given experiment when they were mixed, the scientists conclude that hydrogen and oxygen when mixed in a specific ratio it constitutes water. So it's just a, a simple example how the science work. It observes, it, it experiments, and then it concludes. And the conclusion of science are empirical in nature. By empirical, we mean experimental. So whatever observation ex and experimentations we have had in a particular field, and then we can conclude that constitutes that particular science. The other question, which is again quite complex, and different philosophers and different scientists have different opinion about it. That is to say, does science lead to certainty? This question brings us to the one of the very important and intriguing question of philosophy in general that is about law of causation. The connection between cause and effect. Every effect has a cause. For example, water is the effect while the hydrogen and oxygen are the cause of that. So is it the connection between the two, that is to say between cause and effect, Is it necessary connection? That is to say, whether would it always be like when hydrogen and oxygen are mixed in a given ratio would become water? 
so science deals with this question whether philosophy of science deals with this question whether science leads to certainty or not and there is a difference of opinion uh, of, of different philosophers and scientists about this question also philosophy of science discusses what is the difference between genuine science and pseudoscience and that can be only found after one one knows what is the methodology of a genuine science what is the criteria of genuine science this philosophy of science also deals with the question of the nature of scientific statements it also deals with the relation between the science and religion and that is again a very intriguing problem of philosophy is there any relation between science and religion because science believes science concentrates on experimental and observational knowledge while religion is based upon belief system which does not necessarily entail any experience any observation so philosophy of science deals with all these questions now let's move on to the next one that is philosophy of language again as it is evident from its name philosophy of language philosophy deals philosophy is love for knowledge or search for the truth so obviously philosophy of language is knowledge about language or the attempt to know the reality of language the questions philosophy of language deals with or like origins of language for example how did language was originated is it innate was it evolved again for this purpose if we look back it gets it back to another philosophical method and metaphysical question which is very complex to answer whether man was created or he was evolved if he was evolved obviously the language is a kind of evolution but if he was created as most of the religions believe then they also believe that man when he was sent down to earth he knew a language that is why through that language he preached the principles of that particular language so philosophy of language deals with the origins of language it also deals with the nature of meanings how does meanings come into being how do we assign meanings to different words and language how does language evolved obviously the language is in continuous evolution if we look into simply to english language it has been evolved there have been so many different words which have been included in 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 english language some of them are borrowed from different languages for example in a new dictionary of cambridge about english language has included so many indian words and they have become part of english language so that's what evolution of language means when how it has been evolved it also deals with the usage and cognition of language how do we use language how do we learn language 
how do we teach language what are the different and what are the best ways to learn a language and to use it appropriately and very important question it deals with is the relation between reality and language can we express reality in terms of language can we express our exact feelings in terms of language for example if i say that i've had a headache that basically does not convey exactly what i am going through but you seem to understand that because perhaps you have been through a situation in which you had some pain in your head and you just realize that i am going through that situation or that kind of condition but that is not necessarily true i might have different kind of feelings which i called headache so is there any relation between reality and language that is also another question in philosophy of language the next is political philosophy quite interesting and very much in these days it is concerned with the arguments in political opinion how does political opinion evolve how do we make our political opinion what are the reasons behind our political opinion for some people it could be self interest for other people it could be national interest for some people it could be religion and so on and so forth also it deals with what is meant by politics generally speaking politics has a very bad impression especially in our societies but we need to understand what does politics mean it also deals with the question what is government and why do we need a government what is meant by government and what kind of government we need for some people it would be democratic form of government for others it would be dictatorship for some monarchy would be the best form of government so what is the government and what are the different components of government how does a government is made i mean what are the parts of the government and why do we need it why can't we live without government so these are the questions in political philosophy what is meant by political power we need to define what political power is is political power with the ruling class or elite class or the political power is in the hands of masses what kind of political system is appropriate for a given society perhaps all the different societies have different needs and they require different forms of political systems what are the rights and freedom what are my political rights what are my civil rights what are my rights toward go towards government or state am i free to make my own choices or am i restricted by the government or state and what is by the way what is state how do we define state why do we need state all these questions are the subject matter of political philosophy then comes another very interesting kind of philosophy which is called philosophy of religion again it is an attempt to dig the reality of religion it asks 
and investigates what are the religious reality. Obviously, different religions have different claims and it tries to investigate the genuineness of those claims. Obviously, philosophy has its own parameters to investigate these claims. So, it tries to dig out the reality about religious reality. It also investigates about belief system. How does the belief system work? How does it come into being? Whether beliefs are something which are revealed or these are something which are infused in the minds of people. What is the nature and meaning of religion? What do we mean by religion? For example, there are different religions in the world which have different sets of beliefs. But for some people, a new kind of religion is no religion. Some people call humanism is a religion. Can we call it a religion? Or religion has a specific definition? What are the originals, origin, what are the originalities of different religions? What is the religious language and beliefs? What do we mean by religious diversity? Is it possible that a society can have a religious diversity? Can different religions coexist? And another very interesting and very complex aspect of philosophy of religion is arguments for and against the existence of God tries to define what do we mean by God. For some people, God is a person, an individual making decision about the universe, about the different constituents of this universe. For some people, God is the name of a principle. For some people, there is no God at all. There are different arguments which claim that God's, God does exist. On the other hand, similarly, there are so many arguments which claim and which tries to prove that there is no God. So these are the questions dealt in philosophy of religion. And then comes philosophy of education. Again, it is the knowledge about education itself. It, is, it tries to dig out the reality about education. What is the nature and meaning of education? What exactly do we call education? Is it something formal like taking classes in a classroom and having a kind of schedule and then taking some exams and getting a piece of paper? Do we call it education? Or education is something else? It does not necessarily has to be formal a classroom education. What is the purpose and goal of education? Why do we need education? Why do we get education? Is it just a piece of paper to get a job? Or does education have any other goals or purposes? Then comes the methods of education. There are different methods of education. Different philosophers have come up with different kinds of different methodologies of education. What are those methodologies of education? That is the concern of philosophy of education. 
and philosophy of education basically has twofold nature which tries to look into both inwards to philosophy and outwards to educational practices what is the philosophy of education what is the reality it tries to look into the reality of education what do we mean by education and also tries to look into what are the educational practices so is there any relation between the nature and philosophy of education with current educational practices or not these are the questions to name some in philosophy of education although there are so many other questions which philosophy of education deals with but these are the basic and main questions of philosophy of education so these are different kind of kinds of philosophy to name a few and these are the important ones just to give you an idea about different kinds of philosophy again i would recommend the books i have already recommended to you and try to look into these books in order to get a grasp of different kinds of education and if you have any question please do ask and get in touch with me whenever you can and i will try to answer your question thank you very much till next lecture stay safe and well and look after yourself thank you very much allah hafiz